I'm here with Lou Burkholz, founder of Edgework, and we're here to talk about play-based healing. And I just want to ask you in a little bit of time we have, what is healing about play? I think there's a couple things. One is um, healing in, in my mind is sort of the, the thing we try to do to manage what is hard and where there's pressure, chaos, disorder, lack of control. And in, in my entire life and also particularly my career, play tends to be these moments. And unfortunately they're usually just moments, especially for adults, but where there's just a little more ease, where we feel a little bit better, perspective changes. We find little bits of connection because often play is with others. We find a smile. And when you see a smile, it's hard not to smile. And so all these things that we know at a very deep level that have been studied around how people connect and mirror and heal live inside play. Uh, even something as profound as like the ability to co-regulate, which we know is so important you're just playing catch with someone. You find a rhythm, you start to have a conversation, you smile a little bit, you laugh. Like we, we do this inherently inside the world of of play. Um, and there's so many different ways to play, but I think underneath it all, for me, it is this like, easing of a moment where a little more kind of, maybe the outcome is, is not there first, but a little more joy happens, even if it's a moment. And when you connect enough of those together, that at the minimum becomes kind of a counter story to whatever is the rest of the day, which could just be brutal for a lot of people. And when it becomes kind of consistent and part of our practice, then it's, I think it serves the same outcome that we know happens if you practice meditation or yoga. Um, the things that become our ritual and routine play can I think serve the same outcome as well. Wow, that was beautiful, thank you. Can you tell me what got you into play as healing? Um, so I was originally, originally, originally trained as a nursery school teacher. I loved that age group. I loved the openness of how the children of that age learn. I didn't always love the structure of, of school settings. And I also really liked to be outdoors um, more. So I uh, found my career pulling me towards these out of school time settings and kind of really interesting geographies as well as populations. Um, and one of my first jobs uh, soon after I finished my undergrad was I I worked at a residential treatment program in New Mexico for children that on the teenagers, my group was that on the surface had a lot of learning difficulties and challenges, but because of the nature of what happens for children, that those experiences and the labels had become their identity and the result was a lot of behavior challenges. And so this was kids that had really been left out of the system and were in this wilderness and a residential center. And I I lived in the same cabin with them three and a half days a week and had three and a half days off uh, with the 17 to 19 year olds. Um, uh -huh. And it was one of the most intense things I've ever done, a little terrifying and wonderful. Um, and ever since then, it's, it's I think it, I, we, I wasn't, this was the mid nineties. We weren't, I wasn't talking about or knowing much about sort of trauma or for formal methodologies for healing, but I was in this incredible setting to, get to know children very intensely who needed more than what sort of the system was offering. And that's been the story, I think, for me throughout my career is like being really drawn to places and populations where there's not access to definitive clinical care, um, but yet so many good things can and are happening within the system that's there and trying to be a little bit of a support and catalyst for that. Um, so yeah, so that, that uh, I think has really been a, a huge theme across probably at this point, like 25 years or more of my, my work. And I did have one really special opportunity that I th think was even more of a catalyst than the New Mexico job where I spent about 10 years consulting to Paul Newman's organization. Oh, really? And they, in the US, run these incredible residential camps for children with life-threatening illnesses. And I joined them at a time where they were experimenting with sort of the summer camp model in other parts of the world, as well as new methodologies in the US. And I got to join this team to sort of set up and build programming that had really intense outcomes, but was trying to leverage the essence of what those camps were, which was just like, how do you maximize love? How do you put so much love into a system where somebody needs it so much, knowing that love 
often sustains people beyond when they, you know, probably aren't supposed to be on the planet anymore, but they keep going because love holds them there. And that 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 became my DNA for some of this stuff too.